It's one of my favorite. Sorry, folks. Favorite PK presentations. Um, Rhea Greif is the producer and host of two weekly radio shows on Central Ohio's NPR station 90.5 WCBE FM. They are You Incorporated, You Inc., and You Tune. She's the mother of three, married, and with five cats. She's here tonight to talk to us about how your wellness and health is based on what you do and what she has done uh, is create a public, uh, forgive me, public edibles initiative. Is that correct, Rhea? Thank you. Um, that she would like to share. She's sought after speaker at national conferences and she's here to speak to us tonight. So let's hear it for Rhea. that you're in charge of thinking about the best ways for people to maximize their lives. And part of that is helping folks examine the choices that they make towards preventing the development of issues with their mental and physical health. But that's not what I'm here to talk to you about today, or am I? <laughs> in the past five years or so, the connection of nutrition and gut health to our mental health has become more and more direct. My kids actually drew that uh, last night. Uh, not, or two nights before, not only you are what you eat, but what you eat is where you are in terms of headspace. So books such as Devoured here is helpful to investigate that, and also um, I Contain Multitudes is great for gut health. Enter Portal Park. Portal Park is a mini park. Here's an aerial view from 1952, and it was used as a car lot before it was bought by the city of Columbus. It is the smallest city park in the city of Columbus, and I'm about to talk to you today, everything I'm about to talk to you today happens in Portal Park. That is one fifteenth of an acre. The park is also known as Clintonville Park, according to the City of Columbus website, and it was constructed in 1982. Coincidentally, it received the city's beautiful award from the Columbus Visitor and Convention Bureau. This is pretty much what it looked like until 30 years later. It was updated, that chain link fence is no longer there, and it looks a lot more welcoming today. The history of the park is really rich. This little park used to be part of an entrance to a type of Luna Park called Ellen Tangy Park in Clintonville with a carousel, Ferris wheel, airplane ride, dodging cars, and the park has been a site of turf wars between two districts. So a $100,000 renovation almost had its tables and benches ripped out over a district dispute, district dispute over the undesirables that frequented it. But this park is very loved, and since it was, even before it was born, Rack's Restaurant Clintonville Resource Center um, in the late 70s started a scudder fund for maintaining the property. Sue Whiteman, the park's first champion, maintained the park and got it updated, and Christine Emick, who's here tonight, um, maintained it until she handed it to me um, as part of my role for the Civic Association. Standing on the shoulders of at least three women, Sue, Christina, and Mother Nature, I immediately proposed a public edibles initiative. I've been a member of a community garden, and I saw what it did for our group, and I wanted to expand that after reading about some public edibles um, forests in Seattle. I wrote two grant cycles. and was awarded monies and also materials for soil enrichment, such as mulch and dirt. I did not have a truck, so I loaded my car down as much as I could carry. As you can see, there's not much room left there between the tire and the car, but I was determined. That's like 40 bags of soil and mulch in my car right now. It's important to get partners early on. The City of Columbus has been an excellent partner. I actually met with them today, and we uh, trimmed some trees to make way for 50 nut bushes that we're going to be installing, donated by Green Columbus, and we also secured partnerships of our neighboring businesses. Tim Hortons, Sahara Cafe, Lucky's Market, and Acre have been extremely generous. And then I signed us up as an Earth Day site. We're also a registered Earth Day site again this year, by the way, week of April 8th, under the public edibles at Porter Park if you want to come and see it for yourself and dig with us. My fellow UCAM board members also fully supported me at every turn. Here is our president, Rob Wood, Christina Emick, who I mentioned is here, who uh, passed the torch to me, our treasurer, Beth Kinney, and um, the response was incredible. The idea of a park that offered food to the public seemed to resonate with a lot of people. So, from corporate sponsors like Pepsi, Honda, to financial firms, neighbors, students, and everything in between, a total of 180 individuals came through Earth Week alone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but the park became so much more. We had materials donated, we had tree lights donated by Lightech, there they are installing the lights. Um, we had people who come and gave blessing ceremonies. 
Um, we had 15 cubic yards of Comtil donated by the city of Columbus for soil enhancement. It was just endless. We had people from the ages of 5 to 85 come to this park. And it also became more than that. It became something that was a public space. We had season sensation with food donated by all of our Good Neighbor Agreement participants. We had a pumpkin painting event. We had a chalk the park event. And that's what the lights looked like after Light Tech put them in, which is beautiful. I was so, I'm so excited. It's still there. It's a permanent part of the park now. And thanks to Jim Merrick from Light Tech with the lights, we also became an art site thanks to his wife, Kristen Merrick from Paper Moon Art Studio. There was a scarf bombing, yarn bombing, and we offered scarves and hats and gloves to people who needed it. Um, so the park is now an oasis for all individuals who come through there. All are welcome, invited, invited to participate. Oh yeah, there was the harvest too. We had beets, kohlrabi, broccoli, tomatoes, pepper, lots of basil. You can see our pollinators up there enjoyed the basil quite a bit. And we will continue this with the addition of our bushes, most of them natives, for our pollinator earthlings and our human earthlings alike. All are welcome. This park still needs some love. More signings to indicate our mission would be nice. A mural to adorn our wall to indicate that we have food to share, that this is a safe place, anything at all. We've been toyed with the idea of a treehouse. Um, if anyone would like to volunteer that, as I've said, all are welcome. We also want to invite folks to hold yoga classes, boot camp classes, urban shamanism blessings, meetings, book clubs, or just come sit in the grass, come dig in the dirt with us. We offer the park free to whoever would like to use it, even if you charge your students, and you do not need a permit for under 25 individuals. So please just, just call me. Oh, please look, okay, I've got to talk the first page, good. Um, finally, every great team has a captain, and there's my MVP, that's my son Anthony, even though he did stuff begrudgingly. Um, he has been there with me through late night plantings, cleanups, watering, weedings, and harvest. Tuesday, we pulled out some beets that did not get harvested, and we cooked them up, and Anthony has them, and he's going to pass them around. <laughs> as a takeaway, as a takeaway, I want you to know that you can grow this and do this. These are some parks with an idea that you can do this, and I want you to know, if I can make it a portal park, you can make it anywhere. Please, have a public animals initiative in a place near you. Someone asked for a treehouse. I think I might know some carpenters downstairs. <laughs> <laughs>